I'm Nick Gant and I'm the director of the Exercise Neurometabolism Laboratory. I'm a neuroscientist and I'm really interested in how foods affect the brain and help the brain overcome stress and fatigue. And the brain can be fatigued in a number of ways, through physical exercise, through mental exercise, the kind of cognitive tasks you do every day during your work life, and when we impair the amount of oxygen that's available to the brain to use. So in my laboratory, we stress the brain in a number of different ways. The first is through physical exercise. We ask people to cycle for three hours at strenuous intensity with no breakfast. The fatigue from the exercise has impaired the areas of the brain that control the eyes. And now what we can see is the velocity or the speed of the eye movements has slowed down. Now we can prevent this slowing by administering caffeine and caffeine resets the delicate balance of the neurotransmitters or signaling chemicals in the brain that have caused this effect by being depleted during the exercise. The other way is by starving the brain of oxygen. So we ask people to breathe air that has half the normal amount of oxygen in it. And this is important for a number of situations. There are people who expose themselves to low oxygen levels through their occupations. And there are also people who have problems with the amount of oxygen that gets to their brain through illness or injury. And so we can study those individuals and see how the hypoxia affects their brain and then see how storing more energy in the brain with a supplement can help recover their function. For these things, it's very important that we see how much of the nutrient or the supplement is getting to the brain. And we've done some pioneering work in this area using brain scanning to look at the specific parts of the brain that are involved in the task, the physical or the cognitive task. And we see how much of the nutrient has got to those areas of the brain and is available for the brain to use to improve performance. This is what we call a phantom brain. The chemicals inside it mimic the chemicals inside the brain. And we add chemicals to the little containers inside, and by scanning it alongside the real brain, we can work out the concentration of these chemicals in the human brain. So what they're doing here is positioning a virtual cube inside the brain, and it allows us to scan that specific area for the nutrient uh, we're interested in. And this area of the brain is the tissue that's responsible for controlling the right hand. Our work is funded by health and science grants, but also, and equally important to us, are our industrial partners. We work with a number of companies within the food and beverage sector to develop new products, to test independently products, and to take them to the health claims stage of the process. Music